Maranatha, one, two, three. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord to Jesus. I invite everyone to close our eyes. We're going to begin our uh, initial prayer, asking the Lord a blessing for the service. Lord Father, we pray for the pardon and the blood of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that tonight you may forgive our sins. Remove, Lord, any preoccupation, any tiredness, and that we may at this time be ready to hear a voice, and that you, O oh Lord, through this service of adoration to your name, speak to the hearts of those who are here present, and that we may together, Lord, in a single voice, trust and say that you are our God. In the prayer that we say, thankful and believe in the beloved Jesus, in the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. We're going to hear another song. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I ask one of the ushers to pray to the Lord, glorifying the Lord for the power that we can only find through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus and that cross. Lord, we thank you, your holy name, for this great blessing that you have given us. When and the cross, you shed your blood so we can would be able to reach this life. This eternal life uh, is given to us. We praise the Lord for this great love towards our lives. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Another song.
Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our life should be only to God. The reason of our existence, of our life, is to have a God like, God, like our God. If it were not for Him, we would not be here. If we're not for God, we would be in many other places. But because we have a God that is alive, a God that reigns in our hearts, And he is the reason of our life, our existence. So now we're going to have form part of the member of a praise group, a word of adoration to the Lord. I want to praise you and glorify you for this wonderful grace. We know that we have a God that we can trust. We praise you, Lord, for this great salvation because you take us away from this world and because you place us in a place where our destination, this destination is eternity. We thank for this blessing, for the opportunity of glorifying your name this day in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing a song. The whole church, we adore you, Lord. Because you are worthy of all the adoration. Glory to God. 
we're going to hear also a song of praise to the Lord, a part of the praise group. Uh, the church can also sing, sing along. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I invite the brethren to stand up once again for the reading of the Bible. 
which is located in the book of Revelations, chapter number 2, only verse 17. And I also want to greet, greet the brethren that are watching, some from Brazil, from family members, a brethren from Vila Velha. I greet everyone as well with the peace of the Lord. Revelation 2.17 says the following. It will be on the projection here. Here it is. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives his. May God bless us in the meditation of the word. The church may be seated. My brethren, we are here tonight together with the, the bride and groom, the relatives and parents to have a service of glorification to the Lord for the union for the wedding of our brethren Larissa and Salvador Jr. Our brethren Larissa and our brother, our sister Larissa, our brother Jr. They, in Brazil, according to the law of men, they are already properly married. married. Together, they both went to the court and signed a, a contract, a marriage, marital contract, and they established a commitment with one another in the presence of the fam family members. But for them, the marriage is much more than a simple uh, agreement, marriage agreement. So it's much more than a simple contract. And the modern world in which we live, it was able to reduce the marriage into a simple agreement where the parts that are inside of this contract have their own self-interests each person has their own interests, which is normal. But those interests, they can come to an end. Those interests can change. And when it happens, this contract then can be ripped apart, canceled, annulled. And everything that one day started can um, come to an end because a simple agreement of uh, annulment of an agreement the Bible shows to us the importance of the marriage we know very well biblically that the marriage is a divine institution God is pleased with uh, a marriage because marriage was was created in eternity the origin of the marriage was not here in this life in this earth but the origin of the marriage was in the mind of God and the marriage it represents a mystery and this mystery, it is revealed to us through a promise, through a prophecy, which will be fulfilled in eternity. And this mystery that, that I'm speaking about, the Bible speaks about, is the wedding of Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of man, with the church. 
which is the body of Christ. This is the mystery. The mystery that is revealed to those who are beginning to know the project of God. You too now? Are you a little calmer? I'm also a little calmer. <laughs> the service goes through, we get more relaxed. So the wedding it shows this to us. And now you too, you too have this responsibility of showing to your family members, to show to yourself this importance. Because through your marriage, you will be showing and testifying of what is prophetic. So that your union represents the union of Jesus and the church. So you too, you, need, you have this commitment from that from this day forward. This commitment that you made before all of us to zeal for this that God is giving you. And the Lord God has established a couple of things for the marriage. In order for marriage to work out, God has elaborated, He gave to men a teaching so the couple can be victorious. And those rules need to be respected by men. It's when many couples fail. It is when many couples get out of God's their eternal project and enter into modernity. We're going to speak about a couple of rules that mentioned by God about marriage. And one of them is that the marriage net is to be hier hierarchical. In the same way that Jesus is for the church, in the same way that Jesus is the head of the church, in the same way, Junior will be the head of this marriage. Larissa is going to be the helper. She will be helping, praying. Junior needs to love, like Jesus loves the church. Everything that you decide cannot have from the part of Junior um, be bossy. For love of her, he has to listen to her. And she also needs to listen to him. And together, they define everything that is for their own benefit. But he is the head. For love of her, he has to do what is good for both of them, not only for him. And another rule that God gives is that the marriage is a monogamy. In the same way that Jesus loves his church, one church, the same way the marriage from the part of the Lord is, is like this. You, you will unite with your wife. Man needs to unite to his wife, not to his wives, to his women. This is the beauty of marriage, fidelity, the love, uh, denying yourself, forgiveness, understanding, it's all part. Those are things that the Lord, throughout time, God is giving to them, are experiences that they will be seeking, and God will perfect this union. And another rule is that the marriage cannot be annulled. What God united may not man may not man separate. Marriage can never come to an end. To that death do us part. Are you ready for this? <laughs> That's what it is. 30, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All the way to death do us part. Do you part? That's why, my brethren, that the marriage of the servants of God is not based, this is not founded on rule and laws. 
designed by man. The marriage of a servant of God is founded inside of what is the project of God for our lives. God also He sees in us, God also has for us this great blessing. That's why they too are here tonight before the Lord because they want greatly from the part of the Lord the advice from the Lord and the blessings of God. They are not here simply because they have uh, an uh, assigned agreement. No, they are here before the church, before their relatives, because they want the blessings of the Lord. The fact that they have a, a contract signed does not give them any security, any guarantee that this marriage is going to last. It doesn't give. The only assurance that you have is in hearing the voice of God. And that's why here tonight they are saying to God that they want the blessing of the Lord. Yet here, speaking with us, afterwards they, they will exchange the rings and in this action of exchanging rings they will be speaking to one another and also to God. We don't want simply a uh, wedding contract. We want the blessing of God. Why? Because being under the, hand, the hands of God, this is important for the couple. God created marriage, and God is pleased to be in the midst between the couple. God wants to be present in the life of the couple helping, giving advice, laying his hands, his hands upon them. And that's what they want. They want more than ever to say here tonight to the Lord, Lord, we want to be under your hands. We want to say that our dreams, they are under your hands, Lord. We say that our happiness is under your hands. We want to say, Lord, that our joy is under your hands. That the joy, the love that they have, the security that they have, everything that they plan is in God's hands. Maybe many here tonight don't know what it is to be under the hands of God. Maybe you who entered here, you may never have experienced this. Maybe you who entered here tonight may have never been a target of the love of God upon your life. Not because it does not love you, but because you have something called free will, which is the right that you have of canceling the project of God on your life. And tonight, we're going to speak a little bit about what is to be under the hands of God. We as a church, we can testify of this. Junior and Larissa, for sure. From the day they were born, they know the Lord. And together, since they were kids in school, they studied in the same school, serving the same Lord. They are witnesses of the power of God in their lives. What they are able to, they have been able to achieve to this day, was a little bit because of their own merits, but also much more because God blessed their lives. But the church cannot really testify of the power of God. And this text, text that we spoke, text that we read, speaks of something speaks of a moment in which Israel left Egypt. We all know this story. All of us know a little bit of what it is to leave 
from Israel, the Israel leaving Egypt, God rises up Moses. God pre prepares Moses, and the people of Israel was living for 430 years enslaved, and now the Lord takes the people out of the claws of Pharaoh and prepare people for a uh, walk. And now the people depart. And the Bible says that 600,000 men were not even counting the wives, the children, not even counting the animals that went, went with them, the livestock. 600,000 men left Egypt and entered through the desert. And they saw the power of God, the powerful hands of God moving on their behalf, opening up the Red Sea, allowing the people to walk through a path that, that didn't exist, but that served for the deliverance of the people of God. And now, they, before the desert, without any means to sow and to harvest anything that they were would be um, sowing and it no means to live in the desert how do you live in the desert but God provided to his people the word tells us that every morning God gave the sustenance to his people God spoke to Moses Moses five, five days of the week is going to rain manna. Five days in the morning, my people should harvest a daily portion. Not more, not less. Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every morning, the people sleeping in the tents, they, everything that they saw in the morning. The only thing that they saw in the morning was the manna. Manna was kind of a seed. It was a type of a seed. I don't know if you have seen. It's like a, a seed of a, a leaf. And with this seed, the people made cakes, the people made bread so that they would uh, feed. And their entire culinary was based on, on this type of food every morning and the Lord said Moses every morning the portion needs to be daily whatever is left needs to be thrown away the sixth day they needed to seek a uh, double portion whoever made cakes needed to make it for two days. On the seventh day, they would not have anything. And once again, it would go back to the beginning, the first day of the week. Um, those who heard the Lord received their blessing. And those who, in obedience, to the Lord, to the Word of God, they saw a miracle from the part of the Lord because they depended only on a miracle. They only depended on God. They could not count on what they had because they had nothing. They could not count on what they brought from Egypt because they spent 40 years wandering in the desert. And you might be able to say, Wait a minute, this thing, some people say that the manna fell on a specific region of the desert and some maybe some season of the year. No, they walked for 40 years in the desert. So there's no, this, this theory is flawed. Man cannot argue about that. It was a miracle of God. There's no other way for peop for the Jewish people to survive in the desert. They depended on the blessing of God. Depend they depended totally, completely, on being under the, the hands of God. 
and for 40 years God provided for them and what does it have to do with our lives right here what does it have to do with the life of junior ladies you know uh, what is the reason why I'm speaking about this is because the life of the servants is like this there are going to be days in the week where we receive the daily blessing of God and what is that from Sunday to Thursday what is this it those are the deliverance that, that God always gives us is a reason why we are here tonight it's a great great blessing from God those are answers of prayers it is what daily God is the actions of justice of God upon your lives upon the life of your parents of over the life of the church that we always have but on the sixth day the blessing will be double on the sixth day the portion will be double what does that mean those are the blessings that are really bring joy to your heart the blessing that causes us to say this is a wonderful God who knows is a promotion at work maybe it is a house that you may acquire or maybe uh, getting a new car or maybe a cure that God may give you or maybe it is something that you may be waiting for for a long time for many years that has not arrived but might come on a sixth day is a double person of God it is what surrounds us that what causes us to go back always to be um, under the protection of the hands of the Lord but then comes the seventh day and then you go out there and you see nothing those are the trials those are the tribulations it's the blessing of God that you may may say when will this blessing come this answer never comes I was counting on this but to this day God has not opened his door is a moment in which you will feel abandoned alone those are the trial and tribulations that the marriage sometimes goes through but know of one thing that this day God has never forsaken you because the blessing of the previous day will be enough for those difficult moments the double portion what you have already lived in the presence of the Lord should always be feeding you in the difficult moments and know one thing God always prepares his servants for the worst God always prepares his servants for the difficult moments for the moment of trial for the moment in which you don't see any way out you can observe it every difficulty comes firstly with the blessing of, of God but when you are on the seventh day when you're living this moment the Sabbath it was a moment in which you are not supposed to do anything you ne just need to trust the Lord the trial serves for this the trial serves for you to trust the Lord the trial serves for you to sanctify yourself for you to seek the Lord so that you may be able to hear the voice of this God that is always speaking to the heart of man the seventh day seventh days is for this but many times throughout those trials we are always encouraged that's when we need to seek the Lord because the seventh day is for one, one a moment for consecration a moment in which you need to seek the Lord dedicate to the Lord on the seventh day junior ladies know of one thing that the Sunday always comes the blessing always comes back to the home of those who are faithful to God the Sabbath may come it will always come but the blessing is renewed in the life of those who serve the Lord and so that I hope that this word may serve for us not only for you too we're here beginning a new home they begin a new life so that 
a home begins like this listening to the voice of the Lord because the word speaks exactly this who has an ear listen to what the spirit speaks to the church whoever comes I will give uh, to eat of the hidden manna Jonah saw the manna in eternity inside of the ark of the covenant he saw this in a vision but it is interesting that the manna was inside of the Ark of the Covenant. It was hidden, protected. The Ark has no, had no glass, so you could see through. There's no way for you to see inside of it. But inside of it, we know that there is the staff of Aaron, the blossom, a, a vessel with manna, and also the tables of the Lord, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The symbol of the Trinity is in the ark. But in order for you to see, in order for you to, to see what is hidden, you need to seek. You need to open the ark. You need to ask the Lord for the ark to open up. And the ark of the Lord, we know that is the presence of God in the life of the servant. The ark represented this, the importance of the presence of God in the life of Israel. So that, so that you could receive and be able to eat of the manna that is hidden, you need to seek the Lord. And God will allow you to know this great mystery, which is in the person of the Lord Jesus, because is the bread, bread from heaven. He is the manna. He is the one who satisfies man's hunger. The emptiness that is inside of man's heart. Only Jesus can give this blessing, this experience of man feeling completely filled, man feeling complete. That's why tonight, this word is not only for Junior and Larissa, but for all of us. Because you can tonight leave this place with this experience of hearing the voice of God, of eating of the hidden manna and experience of the power of God in the life of man. Amen. We're going to stand up. We're going to hear a song. I invite Pastor Roger to be here ahead of the church.
blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, we're going to we're going to pray for the couple. He may kneel down. Ask that you may close your eyes. Ask Pastor Roger to pray for the couple. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Lord, we want to pray for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. We pray in favor of this couple, Lord. They're on your presence tonight. And they plead for a blessing of, over this union. To operate in the life of, of your children. Seal with the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Make us a present, Lord, and inhabit in this relationship in every moment, in the happy moments, the moment of trial, the difficult moments, and that every, always they may be able to seek you, Lord, and that you may always be the, the foundation of this relationship. Bless Carissa Jr. and Lord, so that in this union may be able to be able to uh, testify of, of many blessings that we'll be able to achieve in your presence from this day forward. We ask, therefore, your blessing be with the children, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray, bring this service to a close. Lord Father, we want to once again praise your holy name and say, Lord Father, that you may receive this service in glorification to the name of the Lord for the life of your servants, Lord, for this home that is beginning your presence. And we ask that all of us who came to our house, we may be able to experience living under your powerful hands. Take us home in peace. Receive our adoration is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Firstly, the couple will leave. And then later, the family members, the parents, the brothers and sisters, the relatives, and then afterwards, the church.
Dr. Brown can sit down, we will have two uh, announcements. The first announcement is that the reception is going to be in Deerfield Beach. All of you are invited together with the parents and the bride and groom. They're going to be in the projection. Can you do the projection? Is I think everybody received this, this piece of paper. Everybody will be invited to be there. They receive the greeting there and the reception. And for the brethren in Pompano, tomorrow we're going to have a special service at 10.30 in glorification to the Lord for the blessing that Renata Brito received for her surgery, the deliverance the Lord has given, and all that the God has promised and fulfilled in her life. We're going to have a special service of glorification to the Lord for this great blessing that our sister received from the part of the Lord. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord. The address is on the last page. The last page at the bottom. After the last song. 